communist MiGs have downed Johnny and Cassidy Kerman, leaving them stranded in the cold polar waters. For now, they endure in the remains of their crew compartment. But they are not alone. Communist Kerbgrad class destroyers patrol the Arctic seas. Can Johnny and Cassidy Kerman be saved? Can the forces of the Central Kerbin Alliance Network get past the MiGs and the destroyers to save them? This is Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. The Coast Guard has requested help conducting a maritime patrol. Along with the patrol, the mission will also make a rescue attempt at Johnny and Cassidy. Why do the Communists have so many ships and planes patrolling around the North Pole? And for that matter, why have they devoted so many resources to the MUN? Alliance engineers have already proven their skills in developing submarines. This seems like another excellent opportunity to slip beneath the waves. The submarine will need ample room for the crew and for the two downed Kerbals, Cassidy and Johnny. The submarine's specific parts are from the mod, the Life Aquatic. The engines from this mod require a water intake and electricity to run. The yellow cubes are ballast pieces. While not shown during the build process, the rear ballast tank had slightly too much weight and that ends up being reduced by just a little bit. A couple sets of control surfaces are added and they really help keep the craft stable as it travels through the water. Since a confrontation with the communist is likely, a sonar and a couple torpedoes are added to this craft. If the submarine is able to approach from deep enough, hopefully the communist will be unable to spot it. With construction of the hull complete, it is then joined with the conning tower. In addition to the control fins, a special type of RCS block that is for use on submarines is added to the craft. This will greatly aid its maneuverability under the water. The last things to add are a water intake and solar panels to generate electricity. With that, the new Kawaii class submarine is ready to be deployed. The crew is to meet Lieutenant Peori on the docks where she will head out to the submarine and the submarine will sail out to the patrol area. With Jebediah and Bill accompanying Peori for this mission, the rescue of Johnny and Cassidy has a high likelihood of success. The first part of the mission requires the crew to sail to three different locations, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Once that is complete, they will be able to sail north and try to find Johnny and Cassidy's downed craft and hopefully be able to get past the communists and save them. As the crew approaches the wreckage, Peori detects a curb grad destroyer on the sonar. As the sun begins to set, the solar panels are unable to keep up with the electrical needs of the sonar and the engine. With their electricity supply waning, doubt creeps into the minds of the crew. But as long as the destroyer doesn't detect them, there's still a good chance for success. They are now 15 kilometers away from Johnny and Cassidy, and only six and a half from the destroyer. The torpedoes only have a range of five kilometers. They are now three and a half kilometers away from the destroyer. Peori arms the torpedoes, then locks on and fires. As the torpedo hones in, the communists begin returning fire, but it's too late. The destroyer is decimated. Now the crew can safely sail towards the wreckage. The sub comes right up to the wreckage, and it looks like the crew compartment is still in good shape. The special submarine RCS thrusters come in very handy as the submarine maneuvers around to where the crew are located. Jebediah moves in close and knocks on the capsule door just to let Johnny and Cassidy know that he's there. Johnny gets the message and gets out of the capsule and swims over to the submarine where he is able to get in the hatch. He is followed quickly by Cassidy who does the same thing and gets in the sub. All that remains now is for the crew to sail back to the harbor. Johnny and Cassidy are very thankful for the ride. Huzzah! Well done! When you've completed your report, there's a bunch of us gathering at the Officers Club, and we'd love you to join us for some tall tales from your sea adventures. The latest observation satellite has already proven useful around Kerbin, so the Alliance thinks it'd be a good idea to put another one in orbit around the Mun. The design for this new satellite is very similar to the previous one, except this one will have more Delta V. There's already one satellite capable of generating high-resolution imagery in orbit around the Mun. However, this new one will also be able to detect anomalies. It is hoped that this new satellite will be able to detect whatever it is that the communists are so interested in. While the rocket itself 
isn't all that interesting. The new technology in the satellite should be able to start providing some answers to the mysteries on the mind. The lack of solid intelligence concerning the communist motives has really left the Central Kerbin Alliance Network guessing. There's even some crazy fringe theorists that are suggesting aliens. Seriously, you'd think a species of little green men would know better than to suggest things like aliens. The craft raises its apoapsis out to the mun. It will then need to make a correction burn about midway to the mun in order to get into a polar orbit. The first mun orbiter has already successfully mapped the entire surface and has been able to track some of the communist activity on the surface of the mun. Besides aliens, what more plausible explanations might explain why the communists are devoting so many resources to the mutt? Have they found some kind of rare element? Are they building some kind of super weapon? Hopefully, this probe will get to the bottom of the situation. The probe is put into a 150 kilometer high orbit and immediately begins scanning. And right away, it begins sending data to the ScanSat network. Alliance scientists begin checking the feed, and it looks like everything is coming in okay. Out of curiosity, they should pull up the map of Kerbin, and it looks like the ScanSat satellite has detected something near the North Pole. Perhaps this is what the communists are after. The mission will need to be sent there soon. But first, the Coast Guard needs help again. One of their pilots had a malfunction and had to eject near the island airfield. Pontoons were quickly installed on the H-1 helicopter. The Space Center's own Jebediah and the Coast Guard's Lieutenant Dan will head up this mission. The Central Kerbin Alliance Network has found these helicopters very useful for transferring personnel between the KSC and the island airfield. So it is very fortuitous for the Coast Guard that the Space Center already had a helicopter ready to go. This helicopter is already a proven design. However, its ability to land in the water has not been tested yet. Hopefully everything works out okay, otherwise a rescue mission will have to be sent to rescue the first rescue mission, which if that had to happen would be the first time in all of Kerbal history that something like that actually occurred. Jebediah and Lieutenant Dan are able to land very close to the stranded captain. As the captain swims towards the helicopter, it appears that the pontoons may not have worked out quite as well as hoped. The captain begins to mutter something, but quickly turns off his mic. As long as the engines are able to generate enough torque, the helicopter should be able to take off. And it looks like Jebediah has pulled it off yet again. And the three Kerbals fly off back to the island airfield. It looks like Jebediah is having some fun. He doesn't normally get to fly helicopters. Once they crest this ridge, the runway will be in sight. Thanks again to all of you who have subscribed to my channel and leave likes and comments on these videos. It really means a lot to me. What do you think the communists are doing near Kerbin's North Pole? And what have they found that's so interesting on the Mun? If you have any theories or suggestions for future content, please leave them in the comments below. And if you are curious about what mods I'm using in these videos, the full list will be available in the video description. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.